I love it. Okay, let's go live on YouTube and officially get this started. Hey, Amy, good to see you on here. Welcome. We are back for our Wednesday live stream. Uh, the last two weeks, we did not have a live stream. And I missed you all. Uh, hopefully, you missed me too. If you noticed, we weren't live the last two weeks. Uh, I was traveling and then I got a head cold last week. So I'm and I'm going to be answering your questions. Uh, usually, every Wednesday, I do go live with you where I answer your questions. And that's what I'm doing today. So thanks for joining. Um, Start submitting your questions for me. I'm going to do my best to answer as many as possible. Coach Becky in the house. Good to see you, Becky. And I see Eddie from South Texas has have an awesome Thanksgiving day. Grateful for you and all that I've learned from you. Knowledge is power. Let's go, Eddie. Congrats. And I love that you're applying the knowledge you're learning. Uh, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you. So I see some questions coming in here. I'm going to get to them right now. I know, Becky. Thank you. I missed you too. Uh, so Haley is an RN registered nurse. She's on break at the cafeteria watching a group of medical residents eat toxic garbage. Yeah. Isn't it wild? Isn't it complete opposite of what we should be doing? Just step into a hospital and what do you see? McDonald's, Burger King, fast food restaurants in hospitals, fast food restaurants serve food that causes inflammation which lands people in the hospital and then they go to the hospital and then they eat fast food there. Huh. And then just look at the food given to patients in hospital beds, uh, process junk food. The system is stacked against us, but we are overcoming. Hey, Germany in the house. I see DC area. Ali says, I have been doing keto intermittent fasting, but not losing much weight. It's a slow progress. Anything I can do to speed it up. Yes, I would say don't focus on the weight loss. Remember, if you have extra weight on your body, you don't have a weight problem. Nobody has a weight problem. If you have 200 pounds you want to get rid of, you don't have a weight problem. I used to be obese. I never had a weight problem. It's a weight symptom. So if you just keep focusing on the number on the scale, it's going to lead to frustration, to your point, to your question. So focus on health, focus on your cellular metabolism, find ways to reduce inflammation. And when you do that, when you reduce inflammation at the membrane level, guess what happens? <clears throat> your receptor sites that are integrated in your cells now hear your fat burning hormones. Now hear T3, leptin, growth hormone, testosterone, and you lose weight as a side effect. So you get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. So what I would say is revisit the fundamentals of your health journey. The fundamentals of health are sleep, stress, and movement. So if anybody is, feels like they're doing all these things, keto, fasting, exercise, but you're not getting the results you want, revisit your fundamentals. How's your sleep? Are you getting two hours of deep sleep each night. Uh, if you don't have an idea of how much deep sleep you're getting, track it. But deep sleep is where you burn fat. And stress is a big, 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 big thing to focus on as well. So I never say manage stress. I always say to master stress. Master it. And then movement. Not necessarily exercise, but moving your body. And that will speed things up in terms of results and health. Richard, good to see you, my friend. Happy Thanksgiving. We do have a few nurses in our academy. It's so cool. Allison, Ancestral Allison. I love the name. Thoughts on low glucose and extended fasting. Do I break the fast or push through? With what strategy? So I can't tell you what to do, but I'll tell you this. Um, when I did a long fast, I did a five, my first five-day water fast a few years ago. My glucose went as low as 52 milligrams per deciliters. However, my ketones were over 5.0. Typically during a long fast, glucose will drop. But it, to me, it was fine. I felt fine and I had ketones flowing and my body was, my brain was using the ketones. But here's the thing. If you, your glucose drops low and you don't have ketones present, that is called hypoglycemia and that is a problem. Then you, you probably, I would break the fast if it was me. So uh, I'm not concerned with low glucose during a long fast, as long as my ketones are up, as, as long as I feel fine. So how do you feel 
And then if you're going to do a long fast, and I would categorize a long fast as three days or longer. It's also called block fasting. You want to break that fast very smart and strategically, low and slow. And if you go on my YouTube channel and type in youtube.com, how to break a block fast keto camp, I have a two-day structure for that. So I hope that helps and good job with your commitment. Mergi, can you talk about cyclical ketosis for women with weight loss? What are the ratio of staying in ketosis and getting out of ketosis? Yeah, so it depends on, if, if we're talking about keto for women, it depends on where that, that woman is in her health, in her um, age. So if she's a cycling woman, she has a menstrual cycle, then the week before the period is the week to flex out. Uh, we want to build the hormone progesterone that week, and you build it with higher healthy carbs, no fasting. If you're a postmenopausal woman, it's done differently. So we, we teach this in the Keto Camp Academy, which is my uh, signature course. Um, the general rules to follow is get your carbs on a flex day. So a, a keto flex day is a cyclical day of adding in carbs. On that day, you want to consume over 100 grams of carbs and not practice fasting to ensure that you get, into, uh, get out of ketosis. <clears throat> Katie, good to see you. David in London, good to see you as well. Julie in Madisonville, Louisiana. Good to see you on here. Michigan. Chris is in Michi from Michigan, but actually in Chicago, headed to Chicago. Cool. Maggie in Houston. Hey, Maggie. Good to see you. Or Katie. Uh, any tips for brain fog? Mental clarity. Yes, I do have some tips on that. Harpreet, um, get into ketosis. Get those brains flooded with ketones. It'll help with brain fog. Practice intermittent fasting and different intermittent fasting strategies because intermittent fasting, when you're in a fasted state, your body raises brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, which is like miracle growth for the brain. And then the third tip would be to remove heavy metals from your body, especially mercury, which get embedded into the brain. So ketosis, fasting strategies, uh, exercise as well, floods the brain full of BDNF and a heavy metals detox. Olive oil as well and blueberries, I would add into the mix. So olive oil and blueberries are rich in polyphenols and antioxidants that actually help downregulate brain inflammation. Olive oil specifically has something in it, a compound, a polyphenol called oleocanthals, which has been shown to help with brain inflammation and uh, which is a, the cause of uh, brain fog. What is a good keto basic meal plan for a male attempting to lose body fat? If you go to Keto Camp, um, excuse me, ketokickstartguide.com, William, you can download a free guide um, that'll apply to men and women. So that'll give you an easy strategy. To, uh, I think it's a 28 day protocol. Gives you examples of what to eat, what not to eat. So ketokickstartguide.com, William, is where you get that. Are protein bars okay? No cow, dairy protein bars, Quest bars. Uh, in general, I'm not a big fan of protein bars. I would rather have like beef sticks, 100% grass-fed beef sticks. Most protein bars have artificial sweeteners, seed oils, uh, whey protein. Uh, so I, I'm not a fan of them. Now, if I do have a protein bar from time to time, here are the ones that I use and what I recommend to the students inside of my Keto Camp Academy. Paleo Valley has a good superfood bar. If you go to paleovalley.com and use Keto Camp 1.5 at checkout, you can get 15% off their bars. Bulletproof bars are good. And um, Primal Kitchen have some good collagen bars. Netherlands in the house. What's up? I see New Jersey, Nawal, good to see you. I see Anjali, who says, Ben, I want to share something with you. I have precancerous cell, precancerous cells in my stomach. I was una unable to live without antacids, but after doing fasting and keto for one year, it's all gone. My endoscopy report is normal. Thanks for guiding us, and your videos are very helpful. That is amazing, Anjali. Um, super cool. Congrats to you. You took action. I'm proud of you. Keep healing your amazing body. Okay, I see TikTok, the hogs rack barbecue sauce. Getting a phone call. Uh, what is happening when your blood sugar levels are elevated after a 16 hour fast? By the way, I'm diabetic. If your blood sugar levels are going up during a fast, that is the wrong trend we wanna see. Now, what is happening can be many different variables. Number one, 
the fast could be too stressful for your body to adapt and your body is raising cortisol and glucose is following, that could be part of it. So you would probably want to work up your fasting muscle some more. Number two, it could be gluconeogenesis. Your body's breaking down your bo- your protein to create glucose because you're not metabolically flexible. So I would do more keto for a few weeks and then get back to fasting and you should see better numbers doing that. We could teach that to you. You know, diabetes, if anybody watching this right now has type 2 diabetes or knows somebody who is type 2 diabetic, you could reverse that. You could get rid of your diabetes within weeks to months. In our Keto Camp Academy, we see students get off their medication, their insulin all the time. And this is near and dear to my heart because my dad My father, he died from the complications of diabetes in 2014. And I wish, I pray that I would have had that this information for him back then because I know he would be alive to this day. So it is my duty, responsibility, and obligation, especially to help those who are diabetic. So if you're diabetic, please let me show you the way. Allow me to show you the way. Don't listen to the American Diabetes Association. Don't listen to your conventional doctor. They're going to tell you, you cannot reverse your type 2 diabetes. They're going to tell you that it's a chronic disease that we can manage with medication. They're going to tell you, look, this medication is improving your blood sugars and they're going to pat themselves on the back. But that does not mean the diabetes is getting better. Your blood sugars might get better with medication and insulin, but that disease is getting worse. And most people don't even die from diabetes. It's actually pretty rare. It's what the diabetes leads to. It's the cancer, the kidney failures, the amputations, the strokes, the heart disease. That's what kills the person. And it happens over time. But that does not have to be your future. So please, if you have type 2 diabetes or know somebody, come into our Keto Camp Academy. Let me and let the coaches show you the way. Um, if If you message me on Instagram, I'll get you some more details on that. If anybody wants to learn about my health coaching and and wants to get health coaching from me and access to our Keto Camp Academy, message me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is the Benazadi. You can see here at the bottom left of my screen right there, the Benazadi, same as TikTok. And message me with the word energy, E-N-E-R-G-Y on Instagram. And I'll know exactly why you're reaching out to me. And I will show you the way. I promise you, this is going to be the greatest thing you've ever done for your health and especially if you're type 2 diabetic. Elizabeth, amen. I agree. I agree. How do, you, how do we get rid of sugar cravings? Hey, Cindy. Sugar cravings, yeah. There's a few ways to overcome sugar cravings, Cindy. Uh, again, I know we've spoken before, Cindy. I'd love to show you the way. Uh, the Academy has built out... The Academy has a lot of things sprinkled in on sugar addiction, but I'm going to share with you right now what you can do. Focus on protein. If you're struggling with sugar addiction and you're struggling with carb addiction and just overeating, it's a problem with the hormone leptin. Leptin, L-E-P-T-I-N. Leptin is a hormone. It's a fat burning hormone that tells your brain, there's receptor sites in your brain. It signals to your brain, you're full. Stop eating. No need to grab the Doritos or the Oreos or to keep eating the ice cream. You're full. You're done. You're good. Now, how do you get leptin signaling properly? Protein helps with that, especially animal protein, beef, eggs, um, fish, fatty fish, poultry, organ meat, because protein activates leptin. Protein activates other hormones and chemicals that help your brain and stomach feel full, like cholecystokinin, peptide YY. So I would recommend that, uh, number one. Number two, apple cider vinegar before your meals. There's also some research that L-glutamine supplementation, L-glutamine, 500 milligrams, two to three times a day will help the part of the brain that lights up when you experience a sugar craving and work with our coaches, Cindy. We have myself and our coaches, we could really help fine tune this for you and help you overcome the cravings. But uh, one more thing I'll add to that is to make sure you get quality sleep because research is clear. If you're not getting quality sleep, you're going to wake up the next morning, higher levels of cortisol which is your stress hormone, higher levels of ghrelin, your hunger hormone, lower levels of leptin, higher levels of blood sugar, not good. So sleep needs to be a priority. Puerto Rico. Hey, Myrta, love you too. I'm going to be in Puerto Rico in February. First time there, February, 2023. Eric Reynolds. 
What's up, my brother, Keto Favo? Oh, you're in uh, Palm Beach, not too far from me. Love you, dude. Happy Thanksgiving to you and the family. Sleep is an amazing healer. That is right. I'm just going through some of the Instagram questions. Block fast, anything longer than 72 hours. That is right. At least my definition. Hey, Lana. Brilliant, Lana. Good to see your beautiful face here. Salam to you too, my friend. Uh, let's see. Do you have a favorite olive oil brand? I do, Nicole. My favorite olive oil brand is from the Fresh, the fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. They are amazing. Uh, you could get a $39 bottle for a buck if you go to ketocampoliveoil.com. But here's how you know if your olive oil is legit or not. Y'all ready for this? Do the olive oil test. Go to your kitchen right now. Go to your pantry. Grab your olive oil. Put it in a shot glass. Pour it into a shot glass and take a shot. If that olive oil goes down smooth and you don't notice anything, that's a red flag that it's maybe cut with seed oils or it's rancid, it's old. Here's what you want to notice and what you want to see and feel. You want that olive oil to burn your throat, <clears throat> like burn, make your tongue a little fuzzy, and maybe even make you cough. That means it's rich in polyphenols and antioxidants and oleocanthals, and the Fresh Press Olive Oil Club will do that. They are legit. They are organic. They are cold-pressed. They support local farmers all across the world, regenerative farming. So if you go to ketocampoliveoil.com, you could get a $39 bottle for $1. They're awesome. The Daily Rose. Hey, what about too many protein instead of fat? Help me out. What about too much protein instead of fat? Um, I'm not sure what the question is, but protein is a priority for us in the Keto Camp Academy. You want to make sure you hit your protein requirement on most days, which is one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight. So if your goal weight is 120 pounds, you want to consume on most days 120 grams protein each day from animal protein. The fat, no need to increase fat to hit those keto ratios. That's more confusing. Just get the natural fat that comes with the protein. Thank you, Farah. I appreciate you. David says, my friend is undergoing chemo and radiotherapy after surgery for brain cancer. Would consumption of extra virgin olive oil help him as he won't change his lifestyle and just fix... and?" Is just fixed on having something to take. And we'll only listen to his medical team who told him he has only 14 months to live. Wow. Well, you know, the name of the game, David, is, is to reduce inflammation. I'm sorry to hear about your friend. And I don't I don't like when when doctors give a diagnosis like that, like a terminal diagnosis. You know, there's two types of people in the world. Let me know which one you are. There's 97% of the population who get a diagnosis like that and don't change anything and they end up dying close to the time that the doctor says they're going to die. 97% of the population are looking for shortcuts and band-aids. They follow the conventional approach. They're unhappy, unhealthy. Then we have the three percenters. A three percenter gets diagnosed with a terminal illness. The doctor says, you have 14 months to live. And they look at their doctor and say, actually, my diagnosis is not terminal. Your ability to help me is terminal. And they go on to heal themselves. They do whatever it takes. Which one are you? Are you a 3%er? Or are you a 97%er? So olive oil is great. It's anti-inflammatory. Um, I would also get a high quality vitamin E. Vitamin E, like a natto vitamin E. Vitamin E is responsible for 90% of the antioxidants around your cell wall. So Designs for Health makes a good natto vitamin E. So those would be some good considerations. And of course, this is not medical advice. That's just what I would do. Miguel, what is up, brother? I love you, too. I love my True Dark glasses. I've been wearing them for months. They're awesome. Really helps with being in front of screens all day. If I don't wear these and I'm in front of screens all day, by like 4 or 5 p.m., my brain is fried. You know, the cool thing about these blue light blocking glasses is that um, here's the analogy. It's like when you're not wearing blue light blocking glasses and you're around artificial light all the time on your computer screen, fluorescent lights, your phone, I have lights all around me. When you're not wearing these glasses, your brain has to filter out all of this junk light. It's like having 
a hundred tabs open on your browser. You're not, your computer is not going to function well. It's going to freeze. But when you put on blue light blocking glasses, it's like taking a hundred tabs to three tabs. And now you have only three tabs that are taking a bandwidth and you function much better. So this is fun filtering out. And I, and true dark is, is pretty, pretty good. Doctors don't know. Well, conventional doctors don't know about nutrition. That is right. Effects on health of long-term keto. Effects on the microbiome. Uh, those are going to be negative effects, Tim. Uh, we, we don't like long-term ketosis. We love keto, but we teach keto flexing. And that's exactly what we teach in the Keto Camp Academy in our four-pillar system. If you're in ketosis for too long, think about this. Let me ask you this question, and I want everybody to answer in the chat box. When you exercise, is that a stressor to the body? Yes or no? When you exercise, is it a stress to the body when you go to the gym and exercise or whenever, wherever you exercise? Is it a stressor to your body? Yes or no? The answer is yes. It's, it's a stress. You stress your muscle, you stress your body, and you get stronger, right? <clears throat> I see the yeses. When you're in ketosis, it's also a stressor to your body. Ketosis is a survival state, which stresses your mitochondria, and then your mitochondria gets stronger, like exercise. This is like mitochondrial fitness. So with this analogy, let me ask you the next question. If you exercise excessively, three to five hours every day and you don't recover between workouts and you just keep working out. You're sorry. You just keep working out. Just all this stress. Are you getting stronger with that routine or are you getting weaker? If you exercise excessively and you don't allow time to recover, are you getting stronger or are you getting weaker? Let me know in the chat box. Farah, you are smart. That is right. You are getting weaker. When you're in ketosis, Long term, you are stressing the mitochondria too much and you're not getting better. You're not getting stronger. You're getting weaker. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Over time, the body will adapt and you'll lose the results and you actually could create some problems in the gut microbiome with your thyroid, with an inflammatory response. It's just too much stress. But in the right dosage, that stress could be incredible. Keto is amazing when it's done right, when you flex in and out. So the way we teach in the academy is we have our four pillar system to teach you how to do this the right way. And not everybody flexes the same way. If you're somebody who's diabetic, you would flex a different way. We would teach you how to do that. If you have an underactive thyroid, you would flex a different way. If you have autoimmune, you would flex a different way. If you're still overweight, you would flex a different way. If you're a woman with a menstrual cycle versus a postmenopausal woman versus a man, you would flex a different way. So we customize that for you. But I hope that makes sense. Um, we don't want to do any diet long term or any um, kind of stressor long term. <clears throat> Let me. Oh, is there somebody putting spam here? Report them, Alina. Report them on on YouTube, and then block them from the channel. If you don't have any problem with insulin resistance and you start keto, is there any risk when you get back to normal food? No. And how do you know you don't have insulin resistance, Gert? Have you done a fasting insulin? Is it less than five? But uh, so many people do keto not because they're insulin resistant, just because they want to experience the amazing feeling, that euphoric feeling of ketosis, myself included. Uh, and then we flex in and out and you don't experience a risk at all when it's done right. Hey, Stacy, happy Thanksgiving to you too. Hey, Roby in Rome, Italy. Man, I would love to go to Italy. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Um, Dr. Westman has the same advice about protein. Very cool. How to downgrade gluconeogenesis in a keto lifestyle? You have to be more fat adapted. So L-carnitine could help increasing healthy fats, uh, eliminate the snacking. These are things you can do to downregulate gluconeogenesis. Does keto have different effect on women versus men? Yep, they do. Absolutely. 
we spoke about that earlier. How do people usually feel when they start keto? Are they having low energy and feel tired? I'm type 2 diabetic and I'm t- I struggle and feel tired all the time. In the beginning, there could be a, a, an adaptation period where you feel worse before it gets better. But there's a lot of things that we could do, <clears throat> a lot of tweaks that we can do. So let us show you how to do that. I'll give you some examples of what's going to help you here uh, since you feel like you're struggling and you're tired. Uh, increase your electrolytes, your sea salt, your electrolytes, get your electrolytes up. Uh, maybe L-carnitine could help get ketones up, MCT oil, goat cheese, sheep cheese, which is 30% MCTs to get your ketones up. And um, I don't know if you're on medication or not, but maybe talk to your doctor about experimenting with berberine as well. But I'd love to show you how to, how to do it right so you feel better. Also seeing sunrise first thing in the morning versus looking at your phone, which helps leptin resistance. Great tip, Coach Becky. Sunrise first thing in the morning is amazing. How long should I be in keto? It's going to vary. Uh, we, we teach this in the academy, but I'll give you a general answer. Three months in ketosis, and then we start flexing. Okay, 90 days, and then we start flexing. That's kind of how those four pillars are built out in the Keto Camp Academy. If you want to learn more about the Keto Camp Academy and my coaching, just message me on Instagram with the word energy, and I'll give you some details. Uh, it's uh, at the Benazadi is my Instagram handle. Hawaii in the house. I always wanted to go to Hawaii. Sally says, since joining the Keto Camp Academy in May of 2022, so earlier this year, I'm no longer pre-diabetic. I'm off one of my blood sugar, oh, excuse me, blood pressure meds mitigating symptoms of long COVID, no longer using supplement, supplemental oxygen ex- exercise during exercise. Oh, I'm 36 pounds down. Let's go, Sally. Ah, you're amazing. We love you, Sally. Sally's an incredible member of the Academy. Look at that. Perfect example. And she, ha- Sally, you could attest, you had a lot of health challenges when you joined us. Now look at you. And it's all up. The results are all going to get improved from here. Tim says, fasting really anabolic and muscle sparing. Heard that's not true. Well, it depends how much you fast, right? If you're doing the right dosage of fasting and you're balancing it out with feasting, it is definitely going to prevent a, a catabolic state because when you fast, it, your body raises human growth hormone, which preserves muscle loss. But if you do too much fasting, then the benefit goes away. So it depends. 3%ers, heck yeah. Okay, please help. I wake up at 2 p.m. and sleep. I wake up at, two, you mean 2 a.m.? Is that what you mean? Or I'm not sure what the question is. And sl- I wake up at 2 p.m. and sleep in the morning at 4. What should I be my fasting cycle? I'm not sure what the question is. We can rephrase that. I'm just going through your questions here. Define long-term, been keto 2.5 years. That is long-term, Tim. I would say anything over six months is long-term. And thank you, Alina. How long does it take to get into a state of ketosis? I could teach you to get into ketosis in seven days with no symptoms. Join me in my Keto Camp Academy. Let us show you how to do that. Seven days, no symptoms. We do have amazing coaches in our academy, Alina, including you. Oh, my finger is stuck here. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm caught up there. Um, regarding what, champion? Regarding what? Pushing what? Need more pushing from you, Ben. Regarding what? Pre-workout meal. Hey, you know what the best pre-workout meal is? He wants to know. Good question, though. That's from Samir on YouTube. The best pre-workout meal is right here, baby. Right here, your body fat, your love handles. When you're fat adapted, no need to eat something before you work out. As a matter of fact, if you want to accelerate fat burning and ketone production, do a fasted workout. Go into a workout on an empty stomach. I love the way my friend and colleague, Dr. Ben Bickman, explained this. When you go into a workout on an empty stomach, you're putting your body fat at the front of this metabolic bus to be burned for energy first versus if you ate a meal 
you would put the calories in front of that metabolic bus to be burned for fuel first. So the best pre-workout meal is your body fat. Now you could always do like um, an espresso or a cup of coffee, but in terms of a meal, I like to go into a fasting. Total carbs or net carbs? I like to do total just because it keeps things transparent. Roby says, talking about electrolytes and salt, what do you think of ham? Say, for example, I had 300 grams of it. Um, ham is great as long as it's from organic, like heritage farm pigs. Um but that's a different conversation from electrolytes and salt. I see some advice that 16-day time restricted eating is something you do long-term. For sure, Deb, as long as you're getting your enough food and, and protein in your eating window, that's a sustainable approach. Azadi, my last name, is um, from Iran, Persian. My parents are from Iran. And the, de the definition of my last name, Az Azadi, Azadi, is freedom, freedom which is what the people of Iran is searching for right now. There's a revolution taking place there. Favorite protein shake is from Health Code. If you go to ketocampshake.com, you can check them out. Our coupon code with them is KetoCamp. They have some great, great shakes. Formulated well, clean ingredients. I like them. And then taste good. Bro, can you talk about insulin? Because for a long time, I'm struggling with high insulin. Insulin is the bully of the block. Most people have insulin resistance. And if you've never done an insulin resist or a um, fasting insulin test, you have no idea. So um, how do you overcome insulin resistance? Clean keto, intermittent fasting, building muscle, sleep, and mastering stress. Uh, keto is terrific for insulin resistance because you lower insulin and fasting, intermittent fasting strategies as well. Love all your knowledge. I'm finally getting it. I've been keto for six weeks, finally down 10 pounds. Took me four tries to get it right. Finally, I'm feeling amazing. Thank you, Ben. Awesome, JCVL. You're awesome. Congratulations. Coconut water does break a fast. Yes, there's sugar in it. I'm going to share something with you all. This is super powerful. We cannot forget how powerful the mind is when it comes to your results with health, and relationships, and business, and finance. This is important. How many of you know the term placebo effect? How many of you have heard of that term before? Placebo effect. Let me know. Say, oh yeah, I've heard of placebo effect. Do you know where the placebo effect originated? Super interesting story. I'm actually going to lecture on this in um, KetoCon 2023. I've been working on my slides. Even though, even though the conference is not until April, I worked on my slides this week. I'm going to give you a sneak peek on what I'm going to talk about. So here's, here's something really interesting. So the placebo effect was discovered during World War II by anesthesiologist named Dr. Henry Beecher, who ran out of morphine in the middle of a German bombardment. So picture this. They're being bombed by Germany. And you have all of these soldiers in excruciating pain. And this doctor has run out of morphine. So Beecher's nurse injected a serine of salt water. So a saline solution. But told the wounded men that they were getting a powerful painkiller. They injected them and said, you're going to feel better in a matter of seconds. And to Beecher's astonishment, the saline soothed, soothed the, the soldier's agony and kept him from going into shock. They were thinking they were getting an injection of morphine, but it was just salt water. But then thinking it was morphine, the pain was reduced enough for them not to go into shock and it saved their lives. Okay. After that, Harvard Medical School studied the placebo effect. And now every study is controlled by this placebo effect because it's powerful. There's also something called the nocebo effect, which is a negative result. You could actually use it in the wrong way. So this is how powerful your mind is. Because if you think, if you think keto and intermittent fasting is going to heal your body, and this is going to be the amazing approach for you, and this is going to be incredible, you're finally going to be able to heal and lose the weight and feel amazing. If you think that, you're right. 
But if you think keto is not going to work for you, you've got certain circumstances, this is not going to work for me. I'm always going to be fat. I'm always going to be unhealthy. I'm never going to have amazing energy levels. You're also right. That's the nocebo effect versus the placebo effect. Here's another. This is going to blow your mind. Are you ready for this? Here's another amazing example of how powerful the mind is. There was a football game, and this is from uh, Dr. This is from Dr. Norman Cousins. He has a great book called The Anatomy of Illness. During a football game in Los Angeles, check this out. A few people came ill with symptoms of food poisoning. The doctor who treated them ascertained that they all had Coca-Cola from one of two dispensing machines by the stands. He naturally wondered if the soda syrup had been contaminated or the machine's copper piping had corroded. But before they could pinpoint the cause, he didn't want anybody else to get exposed. So he went on the public address system and described the symptoms of the sick people and warned everyone in that stadium not to drink any more Coca-Cola. Within minutes, the whole football stadium became a place of vomiting people, including many who hadn't even gone to either soda machine. There were five ambulances shuttling back and forth to bring people to a nearby hospital. Later that day, they found out that there was nothing poisonous in the Coca-Cola machines. As soon as they got the news, the people in the hospital stopped throwing up. There was nothing wrong with them. Cousins called it a mass-induced hypnosis, an acute physical reaction caused completely by people's minds. <sighs> How incredible is that? Have you ever heard that story before? It's freaking incredible. I'm going to be lecturing about that at KetoCon. I'd love to see you at KetoCon in April. KetoCon.org. The mind is a fickle beast. It could serve you or it could do the opposite. Use it wisely. In the Keto Camp Academy, we teach all things mindset. We have a section called the mental six pack. It's a big part of what we teach because you can't forget. I see the mind blown emojis. It's super cool, right? The mind blown emojis. Super, super cool. Use it wisely, my friends. Apple cider vinegar will not break a fast. It actually could support a fast. So I'm all for that. I drink first thing in the morning with coffee. Am I still fasting? You're good. Just make sure it's a clean cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, JC. Interesting, huh? He, I didn't say it. You said it. But it sounds like that happened in the last two years, doesn't it? <laughs> How many carbs a day? For most people, to be in ketosis is 50 total grams of carbs or less with those carbs coming from green leafy vegetables and non-starchy vegetables. Hey, Cheryl in Auckland, New Zealand. Good to have you in here. Can you explain the process that food goes through? How does it... That's going to be the electron transport chain. Your body assimilates nutrients. It's sent to your cells. There's NAD. There's ATP. Um, but it all boils down to your cellular health and mitochondria. That's handy. I travel a lot for work. I do well while I'm home, but I, when I travel, I end up not eating because I'm afraid I'm not messing up my progress. I've lost 10 pounds so far. Yeah, I mean, the main thing to do, and good job with your 10 pounds, the main thing to do is to avoid seed oils when you travel. And I also do a lot of fasting when I travel too because I'm metabolically flexible. So the main thing is just to avoid seed oils and alcohol. The mind is super. Clean coffee would be organic Shade grown coffee. My favorite is Purity Coffee. If you go to ketocampcoffee.com, you can check out my affiliate page with them. We have a coupon code with them, which is ketocamp at checkout. I know, David, you and your wife are three percenters. Anna, good to see you in Vancouver. Sea, uh, salt, like real sea salt uh, is very important. Myrta. So I like Redmond's real salt. They are awesome. All right, I'm going to answer a couple more here. Any more questions for me? I'm drinking exogenous ketones, if you're wondering. <clears throat> Let's see if I missed anything here on, tick on um, YouTube. Which bread is good? I don't do bread or recommend it. Um, 
But I would say if you're going to do bread and you're looking for a keto friendly bet bread, that's it's OK. I wouldn't say it's healthy for you, but if you need something, uh, you could always make like Becky could share how to make like carnivore bread out of different products. But um, base culture, base culture would be the one you would get that's commercially available. Cindy, I already gave you coaching on that uh, when you asked the question a few minutes ago, about 15 minutes ago. So if you want to watch the replay on that, the replay of this live stream will be on YouTube. But I gave you uh, some coaching on that when I saw your question come in. What are your thoughts on mushroom coffee? I love mushroom coffee. Four Sigmatic is terrific. I've interviewed t -Row from Four Sigmatic. They make a great product, but I use it cyclically. I wouldn't take mushrooms every day. We would go on and off of it. How do I lose body fat when, I eat, when you eat a ton of calories just from butter and pure fat with no insulin response? Um, don't eat a ton of butter and fat. Eat protein, quality protein. No need to add all that fat. The protein powder was from Health Code. If you go to ketocampshake.com, ketocampshake.com and use ketocamp at checkout, you can get 10% off. Yep, oxalates are commonly found in almonds and spinach and kale. It's something you definitely want to be aware of, especially if you're sensitive to it. So we talk a lot about that in the academy. Hola, Amigo, do you have any future workshops for detox in the future? I do. Um, I haven't announced it yet, Zulu, but um, I'm going to be taking a group of 20 people through a 90-day detox program in January, and you actually can register for it now. Uh, I just haven't announced it yet. This is the first time. So if you go to ketocampdetox.com, you could reserve your spot. We start it at the end of January. But once I announce it and once we get 20 people, it's closed. We only do it three times a year. So yes, the next group is in January but you could register for it right now. If you go to ketocampdetox.com, this is for everybody. If you want to learn how to really do detox. Apple or cherry pie for Thanksgiving dessert? <laughs> well, are you talking about health or preference? If it's preference, I would prefer a cherry pie. If it's health, I would avoid both. <laughs> so sounds delicious though. I would actually prefer pumpkin pie. That's my favorite. How can I do a 48 fast? How can I do a 48 hour fast for fat loss for a 15 year old teenager? I can't give you coaching on that. I wouldn't recommend a 48 hour fast for a teenager. It's more for adults. Oh, good job, Cindy. 40 hour fast. Way to go. Awesome job. Proud of you. Here's what I'm going to share with you um, as I sign off. I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving for those who are celebrating Thanksgiving in the United States. I want to give thanks to you and say thank you so much for allowing me to serve you, whether you're brand new to my social media channels or you've been following for quite some time. I am grateful. The Keto Camp team is grateful. Alina, Becky, Coach John, and everybody else on our team. Um, we love you. We appreciate you. We'll continue to serve you. Uh, 2023 is going to be an amazing year. Enjoy Thanksgiving and be present. And be present with your family here's what I'm going to do at Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. I'm going to have everybody at my table share what they are most grateful for. Vitamin G gratitude. I recommend you do the same. Have your family, your friends, everybody at your table share what they're most grateful for. Stay in gratitude. Enjoy all the F's of Thanksgiving, meaning food, family, friends, football, both American football and now the World Cup soccer. And uh, we'll continue to serve you. Go subscribe to the Keto Camp podcast on all podcast platforms you want to learn more about my health coaching, uh, direct message me on Instagram with the word energy. My Instagram handle is at the Ben Azadi. We'll be back for every Wednesday live stream unless I'm traveling. So I'll see you next Wednesday because I'll be in town. Love you. Have a great Thanksgiving. I'm grateful for you all.